Since this is the most common type of rigging on western saddles, we need to understand what this means in everyday terms. What this means is that the front and the rear cinch should be equally tight. What happens if they're not? We'll show you. If we don't have our rear cinch tight, the rear of our saddle is going to be free to bounce up and down. And it's going to turn our saddle into a big lever on a loop. As, this, as the horse bends, it will be working this way and that way, digging into that big band of muscles along the spine, firing it, making the horse drop his back. Now what happens in a lot of cases is that people have their front cinch way too tight. And that's because as they do this, this drives the tree into the horse's shoulder. As the horse comes back, the shoulder pushes the saddle and wants to move it back. So they compensate by moving the cinch further forward and over tightening it, increasing the ability of the saddle to become a lever on the horse's back. Now, let's go down with a real horse and a real tree with a rigging on it and we can show you what actually happens if you don't use that rear cinch. Okay, we've taken a bare saddle tree that fits Corey and put some riggings on. And in a second, we'll send Corey away so you can see what happens to the rear end of the saddle when you don't use a rear cinch. But first, let's uh, revisit the rigging position a little bit. This one is in about the three-quarter position. And we'll back Corey up, and I want you to watch this part of Corey's body and, and Corey's elbow so you see what happens as Corey moves. See how it just comes to the cinch, but it is, doesn't have to go over. Now let's bring Corey forward and watch it again. Come on, Corey. Okay. Now a lot of people think that that girth is supposed to go right in here, but if the girth is right in there, this whole mass of Corey's body is going to always have to be going over it, and chances are real good you'll start getting some girth galls. So we'll take Corey's halter off here, send him away, and watch for the saddle to be bouncing up and down and from side to side as Corey goes around curves. Okay, ha, come on, ha. As Corey trots, we can see how that rear end of the saddle is both shimming from side to side and bouncing up and down. This is forcing pressure on the front of the saddle and uh, interfering with Corey's shoulder movement, not to mention firing Corey's whole top line. Okay, now we've attached the rear cinch to the tree and we'll send Corey off again. But before we do that, I want to cover a few points about the rear cinch. First of all, you should always make sure that your front cinch and your rear cinch are connected together. If you don't do that, this rear cinch can slide back and get back here and you will be dealing with an involuntary reaction and you'll have one of those western moments that none of us really want to have. So make sure the front and the rear cinch are connected. But if you're just really not comfortable with going out to your horse and doing this, seek some professional help. All right, we're going to pull Corey's halter off now. And you can watch for the difference in what happens back here, both in the up and down motion and the sideways motion. Go on, Corey. Now with the rear cinch on, the sta saddle is still moving, but it's moving with the horse instead of bouncing up and down from side to side. Okay, for those of you that just are, have a lot of trouble with the idea that you need to use a rear cinch, let me give you another alternative that will achieve the same thing. You can turn your double rigging into a triangular rigging by getting two extra long latigos and putting one on both sides, then going down through the cinch, take it up through the rear D, back down, and then tie it off as no like normal. This will also let you adjust your rigging position if you need to. And it will hold the rear of the saddle just as stable as if you were using the rear cinch. Now, let's go take a look at the seating system.